All right, this is pre-calculus, solving equations using graphing utility. Yay! This is revolutionary. So an equation in one variable is, an, uh, is a statement in which two expressions, a right side and a left side, at least one containing a variable, are equal. So equal sign in the middle, something on the right, something on the left. Don't get thrown off by crazy math terminology. Um, the expressions are called sides of the equation. The admissible values of the variable, if any, that result in a true statement are called solution or roots of the equation. And we've run into situations where there is, you get an untrue statement and there's no solution or your variable drops out altogether and there are infinitely many solutions. To solve an equation means to find all the solutions of the equation, stuff we already know. Examples of an equation in one variable, x plus 5 equals 9, x squared plus 5x equals 2x minus 2, x squared minus 4 over x plus 1 equals 0, x squared plus 9 equals 5, <coughs> x plus 5 equals 9 is true when x is equal to 4. 4 is the solution of the equation, and we say that 4 satisfies the equation. Yum, so delicious that 4. We write the solution in set notation, and if you guys have done the homework, you've seen that they've been asking for the solution set. So, <clears throat> um, We'll go over that in a second. An equation that is satisfied for every choice of the variable for which both sides are defined is called an identity. So let's read that again. An equation that is satisfied for every choice of the variable, so whether it's 2, negative 2, 1,000, 1 million, it gives you a true statement, is called an identity. All right, now for the big money. Find the solutions of the equation x cubed minus x plus 1 equals 0. Round answers to two decimal places. <clears throat> the solutions to this equation are the same as the x-intercepts of the graph of y equals x cubed minus x plus 1. And I will give you guys a moment. Go ahead and put y equals x cubed minus x plus 1 in your graphing utility. So when you graph it, you get a nice cubic, or as we talked about yesterday, a little swimmer guy. And he crosses the x-axis right here at negative. Sorry, between negative 2 and negative 1. And if you use your, your calculator has a zero function or operation. And you can do that. Um, you can determine that the x-intercept is negative 1.32 because we round to the nearest tenth. On your homework assignments or, and, or quizzes or tests, make sure we are following their rounding conventions. They set to the nearest two decimal places, so we need to follow their convention. All right, so now we're going to use intercept. So when you have an equation 4x to the fourth minus 3 equals 2x plus 1, we're going to graph that and round the answers to the nearest two decimal places. All right, so the way you use graphing to find the solution, and I'm going to pull up my Desmos. So you put the left-hand side into the equation. So y equals 4x to the 4th, what's the next part? Minus 3, and y equals 2x plus 1. So in this scenario, um, for with Desmos, you just want to click where the two equations intersect, because where they are equal is the solution to our equation. 
on um, a graphing calculator, you would use the intersect uh, function. You'd use the intersect intersect operation um, and click on either side of the intersect point um, and hit enter, and it'll give you where it intersects. <clears throat> so we get that the answers are negative 0.87 and negative uh, comma negative 0.73 and 1.12 comma 3.23. All right, so here are the steps for using the zero function or root function. Um, <clears throat> when you have an equation that's equal to zero, you can just write graph it as y equals your expression and then um, if you're using decimals you just click on the zero if you're using um, and then if you have an expression on the right and an expression on the left that doesn't include zero you do y1 and y2 so two different equations and find where they intersect <laughs>